Today on Community Watch, we will be talking with award-nominated journalist, TV reporter, Victor Williams from uh, Detroit uh, station WDIV. Uh, Victor, a, a graduate and alumnus from Georgia Highlands and then Georgia State, it's an excellent story uh, of, a, of a local young man who's, who's uh, living his dream. So stay with us. And Community Watch starts now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Community Watch. I know, I know you want to see the friendly face of Greg Shropshire, but he is globe trotting, and I am not exaggerating. And I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about that when he gets back. And he will be broken hearted that he was not here to talk to our guest today, the Famous, the infamous <laughs> Victor Williams. Victor, welcome to the show. Hey, Doc. Thanks for having me here, man. All right. So I'm guessing there may be two or three people in the in the Rome area, Georgia area, who might not know you yet. But um, Victor was a student at Georgia Highlands and... Uh, got his associate degree at Highlands, transferred to Georgia State uh, in uh, broadcast journalism and communication. I guess that, uh, I don't know what the official title of your degree is, but. Journalism. Uh, and um, you've had a, a, a journey, but currently you are a television journalist in Detroit, Michigan, yeah. and uh, doing pretty well. We'll talk about all of that. And uh, other than the fact that we just love to talk to you, uh, one of the things we wanted to, to talk about is just uh, the experience of uh, going to Highlands and then moving forward in your journey. And because uh, I think I think there's still a perception out there that a, a, a two-year college uh, or, or community college like Georgia Highlands um, is not the, the best move for a student who wants to, to jump forward into a, you know, a, a career of some kind. And they want to go to, you know, Georgia State directly or UGA or... Right any of those places. And, and actually, uh, uh, now, uh, Georgia Highlands is a, a state college with quite a few bachelor's degrees, but uh, that really wasn't the case when you were a student here. But um, let's start there because uh, there are a lot of different things I know uh, that, have, that have happened and uh, um, you're up for a pretty impressive award for your work right now, uh, which we're all very excited about. But um, let's talk a little bit about your having been a student at Georgia Highlands and, uh, you know, maybe ways that that helped you get where you are. Yeah, um, honestly, that was the best move I could have ever made going to Georgia Highlands. And initially, I wanted to go to Georgia State University. That didn't work out. So I had to go to Highlands. And when I first started there, I mean, I was a little embarrassed, to be honest with you. I mean, I've had all my friends. They were going to Morehouse, Georgia State, UGA, Georgia Tech. And I was going to this two-year school. But I didn't realize at the time that it was creating such a strong foundation for me to grow on. I was able to literally go directly from Highlands, go to Georgia State and not miss a beat. I came out at the exact same time I would have came out if I went to a four-year school to begin with. 
And so it was really going there, getting the job done, working hard, and then leaving. But while I was there, I was able to network with some amazing people that I'm still in contact with today, just like yourself. I was able to come up with some great guys who are also doing some great things in their careers as well. But I mean, I was focusing all of my time and my, my efforts, you know, on school while I was right there. I was working also at the time, but that gave me the flexibility to be able to do so, trying to take care of my mom. You know, I was able to, to, to work a job, I think multiple jobs at one point, and then still get it all done. And so I think that if I would have went to a four-year school straight out, I probably would not have done the same thing at all because I probably would have been distracted with a lot of things that were going on at four-year schools. And then also at the end of the day, you're only going to spend a fraction of what you spend at those four-year schools anyway. So it's like a win-win. I think when, when I have <clears throat> my kids, you know, years and years from now, when it's time for them to go to college, I will probably want them to do a two-year school as well. Highlands more than likely, of course. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my idea and my, uh, my perception of two-year schools. They are the, the best move any student can make by far. Well, I know when you were at Highlands, uh, of course, my, my primary connection with you was through your involvement with our uh, brother to brother organization, which um, you, you served as president of the Douglasville chapter. Um, And I think that, at least from my vantage point, helped you develop some confidence and some some leadership skills that maybe benefited you later. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. There's no and, question. Um, in addition to that, um, and you knew pretty early, I mean, maybe even before you started Georgia Highlands, you knew what you wanted to do. I mean, right. you knew your goal. Uh, you wanted to be uh, a journalist. I mean, I don't know on what, I'm assuming on a national scale, because you always were, you know, big, big, you know, your goals are big, you know, you didn't, you didn't mess around with little goals. <laughs> right. Uh, so you knew what you wanted to do. And I think we were able to um, allow you to experiment a little bit with that. Um, you know, uh, Jeff Brown and, and Brian at our TV studio, were able to um, have you do do some little short uh, film stories about the college. Am I remember this right? Yeah, that's right. And hopefully you guys can throw some of these things in there when you guys have the, the piece <laughs> actually coming out. But yeah, man, you guys gave me one of my first chances to be on camera. I think I maybe had done maybe one or two stories before that. But you guys kind of gave me the freedom to do what I what I wanted to do. If, if you guys remember that, I think Jeff came up to the campus and he pretty much just had a camera and he was like, "All right, well, what are you gonna do?" And so <laughs> I had to figure out what I was gonna say and all this stuff and had some points and and it all worked out. But I think that definitely helped me out and gave me confidence, just like you said, along with all that other stuff. Because I don't know if you remember. When I first got to Highlands, the victor that that got there is totally different from the victor that left the one on the Georgia State. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys, you guys helped out in so many ways, not just with my career, but in my personal life too. coaching on different things. I didn't know how to handle on a you know personal level. I was able to talk to people and pull them aside and get a, you know, 10 second lesson on, you know, what I should do. And it's all been working out. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, man. Well, um, I want to ask you some questions about your career. Now, I know um, I know that while you were at Georgia State, you had the opportunity to work with uh, was it WSB? Yep. Uh, Was that an internship? How did? 
Uh, yeah, it was an internship originally, and then I stayed on for a few more months as an intern trainer. So I guess that was them just saying, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. He's good. Let's have him bring, or, or let's have him train the interns that we're now bringing in. Yeah. So I was able to stay for a little bit longer. I thought I was going to be able to start right on air at WSB, but no. <laughs> uh, go somewhere else and learn and make my mistakes and then kind of climb the ladder back. Yeah. But it did seem to me, and it may have seemed uh, like forever to you, but it didn't seem like there was much of a gap between your graduation and your first legit job. Right. Um, I'm sure it was a long time to you, but it didn't yeah. seem like really. It felt like a really, really long time to me, but it was about eight or nine weeks. That's so. nothing. That's not <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just the situation I was in at the time, trying to figure out what I was going to do. And it felt like everything I had been working towards was not working out at all. You know, none of those stations were hitting me back, really. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do, where I was going to go. And I had to take care of my mom and all this stuff at the same time. But it all just worked out. It's crazy how it just kind of happened at the, the snap of a finger after that two month buffer kind of happened in between. I started getting job after job offer after job offer from station after station across the country. And that was a good feeling. Yeah. Well, it did seem to me uh, that you, when you were offered that first job at a fairly small station, um, it wasn't anywhere near the, the career goal you had in your head, but it was a great first start as it turned out. And I thought you showed a lot of uh, courage, you know, stepping into that first job um, with the, the hope that it would lead somewhere, which it did. Right. Um, but tell us a little bit about that, that first job. That first job was interesting, man. And I guess, you know, I can tell you about a lot of the ups and downs that happened. Uh, some people know this, some people don't. I guess a lot more people will know it now, but I got fired from that first job, which was, I guess it was a big obstacle in itself, just trying to get over that first hump. So here I am, I'm young, I'm about 21 or 22 at the time, I get the first job over here. I'm learning how to finally, you know, manage my time correctly, get the story done. And as soon as it became kind of smooth sailing, that's when I got hit by an oncoming train. I know a lot of people remember that train crash. <laughs> I'm sure you do because you're yeah, probably. And, and you're not talking metaphorically. You're talking oh, no. actually. Yeah, actually. Yep. I actually got hit by a train and I got fired from that first job. Thankfully, I was fine. I was able to walk away. But uh, my company wasn't too happy with me. Yeah. So they said, you got to go. And I think it was probably. 14 days from the time that I was fired to the time that I was hired at that station in Biloxi, Mississippi. Now, isn't that insane? Yep. I think it was all God's plan to begin with, because I think I couldn't really go any higher at that station. I think it was just time to go. I learned everything that I could there. Yeah. And I had about a year and a half left on that contract, but uh, that train got me out early. Well, uh, seems like we had a couple of conversations during that two weeks where you were convinced your career was done. Yep, I was. But, but it wasn't. It wasn't at all. <laughs> it was just getting started. But you couldn't tell me that at the time, man. That was a very, very depressing time. Yeah. And I wish I could tell myself back then, don't even worry. Yeah. It's all going to work out, man. Well, we're coming up on our break, so uh, let's let's take that. But we have a lot more to discuss with Victor Williams, television reporter from from Detroit and Highlands alum. So don't go away. We'll be right back. I know you've. 
had your moments of doubt and struggle, and I'm here to say I'm proud of you. And although each one of us may take a different path, may we look back upon today as the moment we stepped into a larger world, a greater world. You will pass this way but once. Do it right. If ever there was a time to follow your passion and do something that matters to you, now is certainly that time. Welcome back to Community Watch. We are having a conversation with Victor Williams, television reporter from Detroit, Michigan, uh, station WDIV, isn't it? Yep, that's correct. Uh, Victor, uh, alumnus from Georgia Highlands, alumnus from Georgia State, uh, who is now doing um, television news in Detroit. Uh, and we talked about some of your, the early stages of your post-college career. Um, Biloxi was a, was a, a, a really great uh, opportunity for you because I, I think you really seem to come into your own as a reporter there. Yeah, that's right. Um, so um, tell us about that and, and also a little bit about, because I know you, you have, uh, you have accepted jobs at a, a, a number of different cities, but it, um, I guess a television reporter's career is measured by the, is it the size of the, of the town? Yeah, I guess it's not necessarily the size of the town, but how many TVs are in the town and uh. how many people are watching. So number one is New York, of course. Uh, number two is like, LA, three Chicago, so all those really, really big cities, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you kind of go further down, the smaller the city is. So my very first station was like market 178. And Biloxi was like market 152 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get to where my other stations are ranked, but, you know, when I was in Biloxi, that gave me the chance to really be a live reporter like every single day and get in the routine of going live, which is different from when you have like a script. You can kind of, you know, sometimes go over that. And, you know, if you need to, you can kind of look and make changes ahead of time. But when you're dealing with breaking news, mm -hmm. you don't have any of that. You have to just go out there and call what you're seeing. Or if you get some information from like a police officer, you have to be able to digest that and kind of regurgitate it out to people to where they're able to understand it. And so I was able to do a lot of fill and anchoring in Biloxi. I was also able to just kind of go out and make contacts and see what networking is like, because that's a tourist town. You know, it's, it's right there on the beach and New Orleans is about an hour away. Uh, Mobile, Alabama is about an hour away. Pensacola, Florida is an hour away. So it's a place where you can meet a lot of different cultures and a lot of different people. And that helped out a ton too. But, un well, I guess I should say fortunately, cause I wouldn't say unfortunately, but you know, I was only there for about a year and a half. Yeah. And then that's when I got the offer from a station in Cleveland. It was a sister station and I was able to break my contract and then go up. So now we're climbing the ladder again. So we're going from now about market 152 and Cleveland at the time was ranked number 19. So, so that's a big jump. I know we're shooting up the ladder at this point. And so, so you, uh, you gave up uh, the warmth uh, and the golf for a considerable career boost. Yep. Uh, Cause otherwise it doesn't make much sense. No, it doesn't. So <laughs> I left, <laughs> I left the sunny shores of Biloxi, Mississippi and went up to the cold, depressing, <laughs> and gray, uh, <laughs> gray Cleveland, Ohio. And, and that was rough. Really, really rough. Um, seasonal depression, that's totally real. Not mm -hmm. seeing the sunshine for a long period of time. And then just the type of, like, culture differences. You know, down south, everyone is pretty hospitable. Everyone's nice. They wave at you when they're passing by. They greet you. And you don't get that at all in the Midwest. 
So it was totally different. Another major transition in my career, but I had to also stick that one out. And that was the very first full contract that I ever um, went through in Cleveland. I did a full two years there. But you, you got to do, uh, you know, kinds of stories that you didn't really have the opportunity to do. There was a lot of, um, I think, um, I guess, stories that required uh, real, I guess what I would call real journalism. I mean, that yeah. seemed like you were doing some important stories there. Yeah. I mean, I was doing a lot of crime. Crime is kind of my thing. I know it's kind of hard for some people to believe, but that's usually where I kind of excel for some reason. I'm able to go out there with a firm, straight face, tell what's going on, but then also show that emotion and, and kind of convey to the viewer what these people are going through or what this victim is now having to go through or what the families of victims are having to go through after this has happened to them, whatever you know that situation is. I also can go out there, I can do weather, I can I can pretty much do any type of story you want me to, but it just so happened that in Biloxi and in Jackson, Tennessee, it was small like events, those type of stories I was mainly doing. I think if you recall uh, the the bull riding contest or something oh, yeah. that was on a oh, mechanical yeah. bull. Yeah, so I was really able to get my feet wet when I got to Cleveland and then that's how I was able to really see the path that I, that I really, really wanted to go down. Yeah. As far as which branch of journalism. And it was, uh, it was from Cleveland that you, you moved to where you are now. Yeah. From Cleveland to Detroit. And, you know, it's about two and a half hours away. It wasn't that bad. It was, I guess, the shortest transition I've had to make. Still dealing with the same elements, though, out here. A lot of snow still. It's still cold. But Detroit's been a little bit more welcoming, I would say, than Cleveland. Um, the station that I work at is great. It's way bigger, and they're giving me way more opportunities. You know, also, every job that I had prior to this, I was what they call a one-man band reporter or a multimedia journalist or multi-skilled journalist, which means I'm my own camera guy. It's just a way to say that, you know, I'm doing all these jobs. I'm editing my own piece. I'm writing my own piece. I am uh, shooting my own piece with the camera. And I have to somehow make it all work and, and, and meet my deadline still. And when I got here to Detroit, I was able to have a photographer. So it's not just me out there against the world. Now, you know, it's a team effort. It's me and someone else trying to make the story happen. And so that's been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great. Well, um, can you give us an example of a, of a story that you've covered um, that really uh, impacted you uh, either professionally or personally, you know, one that um, made you realize that you are now um, uh, truly, you know, a, a, a serious journalist. Uh, uh, um. So a few, a few have happened, but I guess the most recent one was um, the Oxford school shooting, which happened um, a few months ago, five or six. This is when a high school student decided to take a gun to school that he was given from his parents and he went to school and, and killed four students. He injured a few others, but uh, we were down there. I was one of the first reporters down on the scene when this happened. And just being there, seeing all the kids running, parents there and, you know, trying to find their, their kids, trying to connect with them. All of the police officers that were there, all the law enforcement, it felt like every single I guess police department in the state was there because they were all responding to the school shooting. And I guess that, that was when I, you know, one of the moments when I, you know, realized, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be doing now. Like, this is my calling and all the years of preparation, even going back to when I was in middle school, high school, highlands and so on, you know, all that was leading up to that moment. 
for me to be able to feel qualified to be able to tell the people what's going on and tell them the unfortunate news that, you know, kids were killed. So. So is it, is it safe to say that you feel like you have uh, achieved your, your career dream? Yes. I would say that. I know you're, I know that. I mean, the dream is, is good, still going to grow and, right. and we'll have other opportunities. And, you know, uh, and I have no doubt you'll end up on 60 minutes uh, eventually, but, uh, but your, all of the, you know, the path you took and the difficulties you had here and there uh, were all worth getting to where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I definitely would say that, you know, yeah. A lot of the things that I went through during those moments, you know, I was wondering, why am I going through this? Why is this happening this way? But um, at this point, it's all starting to make sense now. Yeah. All of those obstacles, they made me stronger. And so, well, yeah. Tell us, a, tell us a little bit about this little award you've been nominated for. Yeah. And I, I was going to say everything is coming around full circle because if you guys recall me being out at Highlands, most of the time, if you did see me when I was in school, I had a skateboard with me and I was always skateboarding. So I went viral a few months ago for skateboarding while doing the news. And uh, that bit, along with some other pieces of my work, it's now been nominated for an Emmy. So that's a huge deal. Uh, this is a, an award that I've always wanted. I've always kind of prayed for. Yeah. And I never thought that riding a skateboard of all things, you know, would help me achieve that. Mm -hmm. So it all came around full circle. And uh, I find out in three weeks if I'm going to be selected or not. Now that... Uh, that award is based on uh, a collection of some of your stories. So, so yeah, I, I'm assuming more mm -hmm. a variety of things. Right. So for this particular award, it's like I had to put together a montage of my work. And so this montage is up against, you know, another reporter's montage. And then I think another reporter also from my station, his montage was selected too. So now we have three different reporters from the same station and we're all vying for the semi. So uh, let's hope. I've got my fingers crossed. Nothing against my colleagues. They're two great guys, but I'm, I'm really hoping that I'm the one to get it. Well, I, I don't know, uh, Victor, but I just have a feeling there will be additional uh, Emmy nominations in your future. I just yeah. have that have that feeling. Thank you, Doc. Uh, I'm hoping so, man. So next time, you know, next time we have you on the show, the uh, we'll have, you know, they'll be just perched all over uh, behind <laughs> right. you, all of these Emmys. <laughs> Let's hope, man. <laughs> Let's hope. I can't wait to get it. I don't know if you guys have have seen what the the Emmy looks like, but it's gold. It looks so cool. And I would love to have my name etched on one of them. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. well that, that we'll just see if the 12th one means as much as the first. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Still. <laughs> well, Victor, we're about out of time here, but I want to uh, say how proud we are of you and uh, proud that you are a, a Highlands alum and that you're um, someone that uh, can can tell people that Highlands made a difference for you. Absolutely. That's my biggest recommendation to anyone out there looking right now. Highlands is the place to go for sure. Well, uh, thanks again. And uh, we will have you on uh, again uh, soon and you can show some awards off. <laughs> you got it, man. All right. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. All right. See you guys. All right.